So, of course, Fox News is still on their cancel culture kick. And recently, they brought on an expert that knows a lot about cancel culture. I'm talking, of course, about Tulsi Gabbard. And she knows a lot about cancel culture because she just tried to cancel trans people and abortions and BDS not too long ago. So she knows what she's talking about. So Trey Gowdy, who is now a Fox News host, brought her on to get her input. And she says some really, really silly things. And she takes like the hysteria over cancel culture to the next level like levels that I didn't think were possible to the point where I'm actually impressed that she was able to make that large of a leap. Having said that, though, I don't want to start with the Tulsi clip. I want to show you Trey Gowdy's uh, little opener here because he honestly, surprisingly enough, he exhibited like some level of self-awareness that I didn't expect him to even be capable of. So he asks some basic questions about cancel culture that I think that people who are interested in the subject should be asking. Take a look. Is it new or is it something that's been around for a long time and we just renamed it? Who gets to decide who or what is canceled? It was the summer before I started the ninth grade when the movie Grease came out. You may remember that movie, Olivia Newton-John and John Travolta. So my mom decided she would take my three sisters and me to see the movie. And we made it about 30 minutes into the movie when my mom leaned over and said, we're leaving. Get your sisters. We're leaving. Leaving? you got to be kidding me. Olivia Newton-John hasn't even put on her black leather outfit yet. You cannot be serious. But my mom was serious. She was very serious. My entire school was in that movie theater that day. It was so embarrassing. I'm barely able to talk about it today. My mom grabbing her four children and walking out. My mom canceled the rest of that movie for me. And she was not the only parent I had who engaged in cultural cancellation. My three sisters and I could not watch Happy Days. We could not watch Gilligan's Island or Sesame Street. So you can forget about Dallas or Dynasty or Flamingo Road. Was that the cancel culture? Or was that my parents deciding they wanted to control what their children were exposed to? And once I got married, I actually came to long for my parents' rules on TV They were nothing compared to my wife's rules. She can hear a bad word through three walls and a mute button. I had to check into a hotel to watch True Detective. And Game of Thrones? She still doesn't know I watched that. Well, I guess now she does. Is that the cancel culture? Wait, hang on, hang on. So you're telling me that this cancel culture phenomenon isn't actually new? That, um... It's been around for a long time and that the outrage over cancel culture is inorganic and even, dare I say, manufactured. Hmm. Interesting. And it's funny that he brings up uh, Greece because uh, his mom not letting him watch Greece. I mean, I guess that you can say that that is an example of cancel culture. It's weird that he would want to watch Greece. Like, I remember when I was a kid, my mom, uh, she let me pick out a movie Uh, It was a VHS tape, of course, because I am very old. And it was between Greece and Aladdin 2, The Return of Jafar. And my mom really sold me on Greece. Like, she was like, look, you have to get Greece. There's lots of singing and music in it. And I'm like, I don't really want to hear singing and music. And she's like, no, 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 it's really, you're going to love it. Like, it's super exciting. So my mom sold me on Greece. And then we took it home. I bought it instead of Aladdin, and I threw a fucking temper tantrum because I thought it was terrible and hated it. So it's funny that he wanted to watch Grease. That's neither here nor there. (laughs) I don't know how I got on that tangent. It just made me think of that. Uh, But, I mean, what he says here, it is really, it's interesting to me. You don't really see that much introspection from people obsessed with cancel culture, but really, this is something that's always been around. Like, evangelical Christians have tried to cancel every minority in in the United States. You know, gays, they tried to cancel interracial marriages. Now they're trying to cancel trans people. So, you know, it's nice to see him use this anecdote because it shows that, like, this entire conversation that we're having, it's not really anything new. It's almost weird that all of a sudden this is what the right is choosing to focus on because they don't have any other ideas. Uh, Having said that, though, he brings on Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard, you know, she takes things to the next level and somehow is even more bombastic and hysterical about this issue than Trey Gowdy, of all people. Like, I would not have expected Trey Gowdy to be the more reasonable one in a segment featuring Trey Gowdy and Tulsi Gabbard. Nonetheless, 
Here we are. Take a look at what she says is uh, basically the logical conclusion of cancel culture. Tell me what the cancel culture is and why we should be concerned with it. Well, you, you rightly started this conversation talking about, about freedom. When you look at the foundation of our democracy, it is based on this ideal, this principle of freedom, freedom of speech, freedom for, for every single one of us to be able to share our ideas and debate them, to argue them, to agree or to disagree, uh, to, to pick and choose in this marketplace of ideas those that we deem to be right or wrong, to be superior or inferior, and, and even for those ideas that may be misleading or dangerous, that in this free marketplace, we have the right to then defeat those ideas with, with superior ones. And others have, have the freedom to choose, choose what they want to believe or not to believe or what they want to adhere to. So when you look at this question, what is cancel culture? Cancel culture is the opposite of this. It is exactly the opposite of this foundational principle of our democracy. It means that in a cancel culture, you have some people uh, who believe that they are special, that they are superior, that they have the power uh, to be able to shut down those who have ideas and views that are different, who, who may follow a path that they deem to be the wrong path and will therefore say, nope, we're going to place obstacles in front of you. We're going to silence certain voices uh, so that only those who agree with us in the path that we deem to be right is the one that is before you to choose. And, and the issue with this, there, there's a few issues, but the, the main issue with this is when you look at our rights and freedoms, and, and our ability to, to debate them and respectfully come out the other end agreeing or disagreeing, as you and I have over the years, it's based on the fact that we are all children of God. And recognizing that, we then treat each other with respect and respect this freedom that we have. So let's look down the path and say, okay, well, where does this cancel culture lead us? You see the final expression of cancel culture in Islamist terrorist groups like uh, ISIS and Al Qaeda who, who, who uh, basically go and behead those who are in, they deem to be infidels or, or heretics in order to silence them, in order to protect others from being misled by, by those heretical ideas in, in the eyes of an ISIS or, or uh, Al Qaeda. Really, Tulsi, is that where you think all of this is headed? You think that there's gonna be like woke mobs? who behead people if they misgender someone or, you know, use Latino or Latina in lieu of Latinx? Like, is that honestly where you think this is headed? <laughs> <laughs> okay. We started with um, Mr. Potato Head and Dr. Seuss, and now we've arrived at um, this is going to be comparable to ISIS or something. Like, I don't even understand the point that she's trying to make. This is basically a non sequitur, but... She's really trying, like she's trying so hard to uh, convince Fox News' audience that this is serious. So what's more serious than like a literal terrorist organization that beheads people? If that doesn't get you to pay attention to how serious cancel culture is, then nothing will. So, I mean, she is, uh, she's getting the hang of uh, how to do propaganda. Very interesting. Uh, she also says, when you look at the foundation of our democracy, it is based on this ideal, this principle of freedom. Unless, of course, you are a transgender individual who wants to participate in sports. Then you don't have the freedom to do that. Then Tulsi Gabbard is going to try to cancel you. No, 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 Mike, but she's talking about freedom of speech. Oh, okay, so she's specifically limiting this conversation to discussions about freedom of speech. So when did Tulsi Gabbard, of all people, become the standard bearer for freedom of speech? Was it before or after she voted for APAC's resolution to condemn BDS? Like, I'm trying to figure this out here. Because if you condemn BDS, if you use your institutional power as a member of Congress to condemn BDS, which is a political movement, then it doesn't seem to me like we should be taking what you have to say seriously when you advocate for freedom of speech. Maybe you're not the best messenger, given that you've proven that you're not very supportive of freedom of speech. I mean, APAC and conservatives and even lots of Democrats across the country have been trying to crack down on freedom of speech of BDS activists, individuals who are literally just advocating for human rights for Palestinians. 
advocating that Israel stop its abuse of Palestinians. So why isn't Tulsi Gabbard speaking to that? Like if you're pro-free speech, wouldn't that be like the utmost concern to you? There was a teacher in Texas who was fired because she wouldn't sign a pro-Israel loyalty pledge. Why isn't Tulsi Gabbard speaking about that? So she doesn't actually care about freedom of speech. If she did, she could have proven it when she was a member of Congress. But she spent her time, uh, her remaining time as a member of Congress anyways, uh, trying to uh, get abortions banned. I think it was late-term abortions, which are already illegal unless, like, the life of the mother is literally in danger. Like, is this really someone who we want to prop up as, like, the uh, best advocate of freedom of speech in America who's anti-cancel culture? Give me a break. She also says, uh, when you look at our rights and our freedoms and our ability to debate them and respectively come out the other end disagreeing or agreeing, it's based on the fact that we are all children of God and recognizing that when we treat each other with respect and respect this freedom that we have. So basically, this is all uh, the freedom to speak freely and disagree and agree. It all stems from the fact that we're children of God. The fact that we're children of God. First of all, um, we're not children of God. That's not a literal fact. Uh, there's no evidence that God exists. And even if there was evidence that God did exist, there's no evidence that we are his children. So what you're saying here is completely bizarre and nonsensical, and I don't get how this relates to freedom of speech and cancel culture. It seems like you're just pandering to Fox News' right-wing audience because you're starting a podcast yourself, and you want to make sure that their viewers follow you to your new platform. And I'm sorry, but I got to point out again that if we're talking about us all being children of God, why does Tulsi Gabbard apparently exclude trans people? Are they not God's children? Are Palestinians not God's children? There are so many issues in America that we could be focusing on. There are thousands of Americans dying every single year because they don't have health care. Uh, there is an entire generation burdened with student debt. They can't buy houses. They can't buy cars. They can't start a family. Uh, they can't start families, I should say, to be grammatically correct. Uh, like, There's so many issues, a seemingly infinite number of issues to talk about. I mean, climate change is going to completely wipe out so many species because of human activity, because of anthropogenic climate change. And Tulsi Gabbard is choosing to focus on, like, cancel culture. Fox News is choosing to focus on um, Mr. Potato Head and Dr. Seuss. 